Good morning. Welcome back to Planet Doug on this uh, Tuesday morning here with Jamie again. And uh, we're headed to the Masjid India, which is a mosque for the KL uh, Indian community uh, located up here. And I think it's in a district they call Old India. Like it's, an, it's the old little India. I guess so, yeah. the original Little India and then the main center for Little India moved to Brickfields but that area is still considered a smaller old Little India and the uh, India Mosque is located there and Jamie got some information that they may have guided tours at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning so we're out we're out here by the River of Life near uh, Masjid Jamek on the River of Life and we're just gonna go grab a cup of coffee and then uh, time our arrival at the mosque or around 10 a.m. to see if we can take one of these guided tours. So that's sort of what's going on. I read up a little bit about the mosque. Did you? I, I did not. Okay. The original mosque was a wood structure, like just made out of wood. And then they built, you know, the modern mosque. Uh, I've already forgotten the dates, but originally it was like an old, like a very simple wooden structure. And they tore that down and built a more modern one. And then they added a few years ago the granite slabs on the outside. You know, that's okay. kind of a recent addition. But yeah, it's, it's the central mosque, like the premier mosque for the Indian Muslim community in, in Malaysia and in Kuala Lumpur. So, yeah, that's what makes it special. That, uh, like normally when you think of the Indian community here, you think of, of Hindu. And then, but these are, yeah, there's also Indian Muslims in Kuala Lumpur and this is their uh, central mosque. Yeah, Jamie and I were just saying that um, it's been a while since I, I haven't walked up and down the full River of Life project. I've been on this end a little bit, but over there it seems to have developed further um, more art installations. The sidewalk area has been completed. That was all under construction last time. So it'll be interesting to walk along there. But, um, yeah, the River of Life is really kind of an interesting thing. There's a model of this whole area, all the buildings. And I just noticed this building ahead of me, that uh, quite, an, uh, quite an elaborate painting there, Malay Village Life. It's covered the whole building all the way from the top to the bottom. It's actually kind of beautiful. So, yeah, and there's more along here as well. So we don't know where we're going for coffee but we'll probably find some place on our way heading towards uh, old little India. Because I've had, I've had tea and coffee there before. I've walked through that neighborhood. You probably have as well, right? I, I've not. I, I've been yeah. through the neighborhood in the past. But I've been to the mosque or done any exploring much more than the street market on, on a Friday one time. Oh, it's kind of cool. Got the uh, washing some elephants going on. Yeah, that was something I noticed watching all the videos from the various vloggers going through town. There's a lot more of this. this none of this was here before. Yeah, yeah. There's new paintings all over the sides of buildings all over yeah, Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. Thing anymore. Yeah. There must have been a government program that put money into it, like promoting it. Because, yeah, doing this wouldn't be cheap and it would require permissions and things like that. Certainly not easy. Yeah. Need ladders. <laughs> I think I got the rivers mixed up last time I was here. I think I called this the Klang and that the Gombak, uh, yeah. but I think it's the other way around. I think that's the Klang and this is the Gombak. I lost Jamie again. <laughs> as soon as he sees all these little places selling morning snacks and food. You saw some donuts here. You want a donut? Sure, why not? It's the advantage of hanging out with Jamie, you end up with donuts. But I often think about these places and how we, we generally don't have anything like this in Canada, of course. But if you're going to work 
you know, you're commuting to work, you're on your way to work. They have all these places in Malaysia where you just pick up your breakfast on the way or you pick up your lunch. And um, so convenient. They all open up for the uh, early morning commuting rush. Yeah, you can get uh, sandwiches, chicken, all kinds of things. Your puffs. Yeah. Your puffs. I could do without the rain, though. So we've arrived in this neighborhood. This is, as I said, I, I keep calling it old little India. I don't know whether people call it that or not. But as I said, it is another little India here in Kuala Lumpur. All up and down this street, you can see the Indian restaurants. And uh, Jamie, this place caught Jamie's eye, the President Curry House. Roti Kanai, Nasi Kampur. So we saw a guy here. Uh, making some tasty things on a grill, so. That's, uh, we're gonna pop in here for something to eat. Uh, uh, looks good. Morning. So what are you making here? Roti. Roti. Is roti? Oh, roti egg. Oh, okay. Beef. And beef? Roti beef. Roti beef, roti egg. I think I have one of those in my future. Things are happening. I've ordered a uh, roti with egg. Roti telur, perhaps. And uh, Jamie's getting plain roti. Plain coffee. Plain breakfast for him. I went for the, yeah, the roti with egg and I'm getting uh, tea. And uh, yeah, we've got his uh, the donuts he picked up at uh, at the little stall there. And because he's a prince of a man, on his way here he stopped at Bun Chun and picked up two egg tarts from Bun Chun, which I've been talking about. with egg. Let's go through the, uh, the flavors here. You can almost go by color, right? Kind of this light brown is just sort of a little bit darker brown, a little bit spicier. And then you get this dark reddish brown. I'll bet that's the spiciest. It's different flavors. Nothing is particularly hot or uh, terribly spicy. Aha! I knew there's a reason I got that the other day. <laughs> oh, here. That can give you something special. What do you got up there? Tim Hortons, Canadian coffee house. So how in the world do you end up with a stack of them? I can understand having one tucked away. How do you have a whole package? Okay. I 
I, I stopped Tim Horton several times, and every time I stopped, of course, they gave me two or three. Okay, okay. Uh, napkins, and I just put them in my in my bag and didn't really use them that often. I kind of keep them with me for just such occasions. There you go. I always have my little. Every time you run into a Canadian, you can whip them out. Did you know Tim Horton was a hockey player? I did not. That was his history. He became famous in Canada because he played in the NHL. And when he retired from hockey, he opened up his, you know, the donut gym, coffee gym. So, <laughs> diving into the dessert portion of breakfast. And the first thing I noticed, and Jamie pointed out, it's hefty. That's a thick donut. You're getting your money's worth in terms of the, the, the dough. Hmm? There's a chew to the donut. Yeah, there is, yeah. It's good. I like that one. Sometimes in Canada, like even Tim Hortons, you get like a honey glazed donut. It's so light, there's nothing there. The whole thing's gone. A lot of air. Not here. This is uh, nice and dense. The grand finale, yeah. Bun Shun. Well, I'll dive in. Looks different from the ones we had, right? Yeah. The outside of the uh, the crust, a bit thicker maybe, or fluffier or something. Yeah, like it a lot. Mm. Just a touch sweeter than the ones we had. A yesterday. little bit, yeah, I think so. Just a touch. I mean, I would go for either one. The ones we had were fine. I think I prefer this over yeah. the one we had the other day. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. I can go without. Breakfast is done. Our whole table, everything we ordered, your banana, the tea, the coffee, two roti canai, everything came out to uh, 8.7 ringgit. For, for the table. So yeah, very reasonable prices there. The only comment I had, and I think we shared the comment, was uh, <laughs> the bathroom at the back was uh, a little bit pungent. So if you go to President Curry House, maybe, maybe it was only today, but maybe uh, if you come here, you might find a little bit of a pungent uh, odor back there. That was, that was pretty extreme. But uh, yeah, here we are. Um, the Masjid India is just a short walk away from where we just had breakfast. The sun came out. So we're getting a nice view of it. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm backing up into people. Wow. Yeah, it's a really interesting setting, too. And uh, I guess as mosques go, like as big, important, as important mosques go, it is a relatively small structure and they don't have uh, room to expand much farther. It's surrounded as they are by all these tall buildings. It's kind of a dramatic setting. I like the tower. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I love aerial photography. So the Masjid India walk for the River of Life. And we've got some information here. Maybe it's more clear than what I read online. So the Maz, okay, Masjid India was built in 1863. That, that the time that year makes sense. 1863, Indian Muslim traders known as Chulias, particularly from Madras, South India. It was initially a small mosque built with bricks and timber with atap roof no piped water and many went to the nearby Klang River for ablution. That's interesting. And the Masjid India went through several extensions between 1900 to 1952 to cater for the expanding Muslim community. In 64 the Masjid was pulled down to give way for a modern three-story mosque. The mosque can accommodate over 3,000 worshippers. That surprises me put 3,000 people in there with designated areas for men and women who inevitably spill onto the street 
during Friday prayers. Masjid India follows the Hanafi school of Islamic Mazjab jurisprudence. Yeah, so I guess that's uh, is it there, right? Yeah. Looks larger in this photograph than it, it does. Really feels like it does, doesn't it? When I look at it. Yeah, three stories, there's the tower. And here on the sign. Oh, okay. Jamie was not wrong. Free guided mosque tour. Plus Islam Q&A open to all Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 10 a.m. to 12 noon. And today is uh, Tuesday. So how did you come across the information about the tour? I, I walked through here. Oh, okay, uh, that's how you, okay. Although maybe you one, saw it online. One of, my, one of my first days here. I noticed in what I was reading about the history of the mosque, something I've commented on quite a bit, that I can't commit street names to memory, the modern street names. And all these streets, they say that this is the name of the street, originally Batu Road. Yeah. like, oh, why couldn't oh, it still be called Batu Road? That I could remember, but yeah. Jalan Tan Suaman Dul. Like, I don't know, I can't, I can't remember that. I wish they kept the old names, yeah. you know? I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. the, the first thing I saw was this yeah. vending machine here. I was wondering, yeah. what, what do you get from here? No, so it's just a coin. A uh, coin. To remember regarding the mosque. Oh, I yeah. see, I see. Okay. More for visitors than, for visitors. than local people. Yeah. Kind of a souvenir of your visit. They're local, they're coming here every day, so they do not need a... Right, 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 yeah, yeah. okay. That's great. So how does this work? Are you taking us on a tour, or if we can just walk... The, the, the mosque is too small. What I can do is, I will just guide you along, and you can ask me any questions you want to, and so on. Because it's very, in a very confined space. The mosque is in a very confined space. Other like the other mosques, which we have, some huge mosques, where it plays a role as a community center also. Okay. So you have like schools, you have nurseries, hostels, mm. well, bank halls, wedding halls. Okay. It's, huge. it's a community center, most of Right, them. okay. But like this, because it was, start, it was constructed in the 18th century, 1863, so the space was not too big. Mm. And furthermore, originally it was a smaller mosque, we call it a prayer center. I see. All right? It was started by the Indian Muslim who came from India. They called themselves Cholia. So they came here, they made a community over here, so they made this mosque as a point where they can discuss and, you know, uh, get together with friends and so on. Okay. So came 1963, I mean, it started growing, you need more places, more, more and more people. So they broke down this building and they made these three-story buildings. Okay. The capacity is 3,000 at the moment. Yeah, I read that on the sign. Yeah. Yeah, seems like a lot. I was surprised at 3,000 yes. people. I'll, I'll let you know. Okay. You know usually whenever they build a mosque, a mosque must be close to a water source, either a river, right. either a lake, or you must have a pond in the mosque itself. That's why we have to do our evolution before we come into the prayer. <laughs> well, I guess one question would be yeah. about you. Like, uh, how, what is your connection to the mosque? No, I'm just a volunteer over here. Just a volunteer. Just a volunteer. Come here just to explain regarding the religion, regarding the mosque. Because as you can see today, there's a lot of misconception regarding the religion. So why we, why we are here is so that we can clarify the issues. I usually advise people, if you want to see Islam, don't look at the people, don't look at the media. Mm -hmm. Look at the Quran and the authentic Hadith. Because people have desire, right? When they are greed, they might go against the Creator's rules and regulation. Media, they've got nothing else to do, only to make profit. And furthermore, the person who are in the media, they are not scholars. They do not know. They do not read. They just hear, say from somebody, and they just code it out, just like that. And that's where a lot of confusion, misconception happens a lot today. Usually on Friday, it's full. Oh. All the most on Friday, it's full. Because the Friday congregation, you cannot do it anywhere else except in the mosque. Mm. Only for those people who have serious occupation, surgeon, police, border patrol, they cannot leave their position. But prayer is an ordain, they still have to pray. So they pray where they are. 
the Friday prayers are the most important. Most important. Please. How long does a, a service last for? Yes, you see, this, there will be a summon where the Imam will give a speech at the area which is called Mimbar, where he will stand on top, he will give a summon, it only lasts around 20 minutes 20 max. Minutes. And then the prayer, 10 minutes max. Okay. Then do whatever you want to. Okay. And before the service, there yeah. is an ablution. What, yes, what's evolution. In the okay, the evolution is you wash your hand. Wash Minimum your hand. requirement is to qualify is wash your hand, your face, your head, your leg. Okay. All right. The reason behind why we do the evolution is very simple. Number one, it's a commandment from the God. Number two, it is very disrespectful to meet the God in a sleepy position. Refresh yourself. Number three, you're walking outside, you must step on poop, you must step on dirt, because everywhere here you can see it's a place where we worship, we bow down, we put our head, we keep the place clean. Mm -hmm. nice. Because in Islam, everything must have a logical explanation. You cannot just say, keep quiet, don't argue, follow. Everything must have a logical explanation. So I was reading in the sign that yeah. when the mosque was originally built, 1863, yes. there yes. was no water here. And ablution was performed at the Klang River. Klang River, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Before the river condition was much, much more beautiful than today. <laughs> today right, right, right. <laughs> right. So, in a mosque, uh, basically three things are important. All the others are just decoration. A place to pray, the which I was telling you, the mimbar, where that's where the imam is standing on top and give the summon. And you can see the arch. Okay, that is called mehrab. Any part of the world you go, you have a mosque, you must have that compulsory. Mm. These three things are compulsory. Because that is called the mehrab. It is facing the Kaaba in Saudi Arabia. Uh, yeah. We visited the yeah. Jalan Ampang Muslim Cemetery the other yes. day. Uh, yes. And we noticed all of the grave sites were all pointing in the same direction. Facing. Also facing, facing that way? Yes. When we, when we lay the body, the face have to face the Kaaba. So the top yeah. of the head towards the, top of the head. Yes. Yeah. No, no, the face. The face will be oh, facing. Really? Because we, we, we put the body in a slanting position where like you're sleeping, so the face the, the face will oh, face cover. That makes sense now. Okay. You know, I was I, exactly. I mentioned that it didn't make sense the orientation yes. of the graves, thinking yeah. that they were on their back. No, no, no. So. They will be just lying. Okay. Yes. Well, that's, that's yeah, something we yeah. learned today. I'll remember Very that good. for the rest of my life, yes. I think. Yeah. Very interesting. Because for us, we do not keep the body too long. The moment someone passed away, once it is cleared by the hospital, when it's cleared by the forensic, right, we straight bring it to the funeral room, bath, clean, wrap in a white piece of cloth, three layers, bring him back into the prayer hall, everyone pray for his forgiveness, bury him immediately. Mm. We do not keep. You have right. to do it as soon as possible. Where is the, do, um, is there a cemetery at, uh, yes. close Us to here? Yeah, there will be a cemetery usually close to every housing uh, housing development. So they will have a cemetery area for that so that they can go and visit whenever. Because we are encouraged to go and visit the graves, give some prayers for them, and then come back. To remind us that one day we are going to join them. Yeah. <laughs> Right? So the men utilize this floor and below. Okay. Right. So the on Friday because of not enough space, so the women because women got choice, they no need to come to mosque. They can pray at home, they can pray mosque, they can pray anywhere they want. Men got no choice. Encourage come to mosque. Mm -hmm. no choice. Mm -hmm. The uh, the alcove is the mirab. Yes, mehrab. The wall is the qibla. Qibla, yeah. It's facing yes, qibla. Yes. Qibla is the direction to Mecca. That's the direction. That's the direction, yeah. Usually you go to a hotel, you can see Qibla, Qibla, right? Right. That's facing, that's yes. Okay. Facing this, uh, make, I mean, the Kaaba in Saudi Arabia. Okay. Because that mosque uh, can only accommodate 2.8 million at one time. Hmm. Only. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're on the sec on the basement floor, yeah. you don't see the sermon. You don't see, you hear it. Yeah. See, that's the beauty about Islam. Islam, everything got an SOP, standard operating procedure, <laughs> right? Uh, even though when you come late, how to join the congregation, 
when you come early, what you should do, what you can do, what you cannot do. In the congregation, what you can do, what you cannot do. There's rules and regulation, 13 points. You have to fulfill whenever you are doing the prayer. If you miss one, none and white. You have to do it back again. Right? So everyone has been taught. That's why everyone knows what can be done, what cannot be done. Even, for example, say the person who's leading the prayer, the imam, all right? A congregation cannot break in any circumstances. Even though he falls down and dies, the congregation doesn't break. The person at the back of him will take over. The person, the two person besides will move the body away. The congregation still remains, doesn't break. And the children? Yeah, children, we, should, we can bring the children okay. from very young age. So when we come to the mosque, we will try to ask the children to pray at the back a bit that's so that, that's yeah. Because right. you can't avoid, because you see like the prophet, when he was praying, his grandchildren used to jump on top of him. Mm. He will never move to another position until they get down. Okay. When he's prostrating, he will never wake up until his grandchildren get down, then he will come back again. <laughs> <laughs> One of the, the five uh, is it main tenants, I believe, uh, is the pilgrimage to. Yeah, the fifth uh, one is the pilgrimage. Is to, yes, to Hajj, have, if have you can you, afford. Have Have you done that? I've done. I've done Hajj. Oh, bless you! Uh, uh, tell me about your experience. Wow, it's that. it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. Yeah. It's really mind blowing. It's peace. You have to, you know, really get into it. Then you can see. Because you see the amount of love you put towards the Creator, you love Him so much, you're doing whatever His commandments are there, the feeling is totally different. Now from, from here you would, you would obviously fly. Yes. And, and at some point do you go overland? Uh, is, is there a, uh, a path or...? Oh, yeah, usually, usually uh, to perform the, uh, the, uh, the, I mean to do the performance of Hajj, there's rules and regulation you have to do. So first thing for everything is you have to put uh, what we call a niyat. So you have to uh, intention, your intentions. You have to bury the intention yourself. You say, okay, I'm performing the Hajj because of the Creator, right? There, there is a guide. There is a line. So if you come from Medina, there is a position where you have to put your intention first. Then you go in. If you come from Mecca, there's another point there. If you come from the Yaman, there's another point okay. there. So from that point onwards, you put intention, you take a bath, you change your cloth, the two pieces of white cloth, mm -hmm. then you start performing. Wow. Uh, then you start going and you start performing. Life changing. It's totally, you see, the beauty is everyone is equal. No matter the king of Saudi, no matter the president, whoever you are, two pieces of white cloth. Mm -hmm. All doing the same thing. Too. All doing the same thing. The best part is I can pray beside the king of Saudi uh -huh. and he can't chase me away. Everyone is equal there. From the script, yeah, is, uh, Arabic. Uh, Arabic from the uh, from the Quran. It's uh, picked up from the Quran. So it tells you the verses over there, the verses, the bottom line. It will tell you which are the verses over there, which which verse is it taken from. So this is like Al Baqarah, uh, forty-five. So the verse uh, for, uh, chapter two, uh, verse forty-five. So these are calligraphy. So calligraphy usually doesn't start from right to left. It starts from up, bottom, it depends on the artist, how he does it. So calligraphy will be, you have to observe carefully, then you start reading it. <laughs> Basically, all the others are just decoration. These are the three important things you have. So the one thing, the difference you can see between a mosque, a church, a synagogue, or a temple is, you will not find any idol, you will not, will not find any statue, you will not find any photograph of the Creator. Because in Islam, it's very simple. The God is a super intelligent being. Not a man, not a woman, not human, no beginning, no ending. Super intelligent. That's it. I was, I was talking about that when we were at the cemetery as yeah. well, because there are, there's no imagery at all in the cemetery. No, yes. No human no. imagery, anything like that. Because we believe the creation and the creator cannot mix. It's two different divine, totally. And regarding the call of prayer, the azan, yeah. somewhere in the world right now, there's an azan taking place. It doesn't uh -huh. stop 24 hours. Yeah. It doesn't stop. Is, is that a consistent message 
when uh, yes. during the call of prayer? It's, it's the same. same. It's same the same worldwide. No, we are worldwide same. No changes in Arabic. Every single uh, performance we do in our prayers, everything is in Arabic. We cannot use any other language in our prayer in the Azan. The call of prayer, like for example, uh, the south of Malaysia starts at 5:58. Yeah. KL starts at 6 o'clock. Then you go to Perlis, it starts at 6.02, then you go to Thailand, go to Burma, you go to China, you go to Europe, you go to States, mm -hmm. it doesn't stop 24 hours. Some what, ways it's... What is, what is said during the call of prayer? Okay, first yeah. one is Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest. Allah is Allah. 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 Allahu Akbar. Allah. Allah. Allahu, Allahu Akbar. Akbar. He's the Allah. greatest. Allah. Right? And then, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. I bear witness. There is no other Lord, no other God worthy to be worshipped except Allah. Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. I bear witness, Muhammad is the last and final messenger. Then, Hayal Salah. Come for prayer. And then, Hayal Falah. Come for achievement. And that's all said each, every, every. Yeah, two, two azan. times. Every, every azan, two, two times. The first thing he'll say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So it's two times. Then he will say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Then he goes to, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Then he comes to, Hayya ala salah. Come for prayer. Hayya ala salah. Come for prayer. Then, Hayal al falakh Hayal al falakh Then again Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illallah Finish And if you go to YouTube You just say the effect of azan towards human body There's uh, research done by scientists Not Muslims Every single molecule in your body Goes to the most resting position yeah. You can check it out yeah. <laughs> I know, like some mosques have yeah. a live singer. Every mosque, no recording. There's no recording. No recording. I some were recording. No, no, no. Always live. Always live. There's no recording in Azad. Wow. And are there a rotation of people who do the prayers? Uh, yes. I assume you do it yes, sometimes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, even I do it. I mean, I, uh, wherever I go, if say that particular muazzin is not around, so we can volunteer just to help help uh, him out. Because human beings, no stomach problem, right. you know, late in traffic jam. Hmm. No, I'm really surprised about that. I honestly <laughs> thought it was recorded much of the time. No, it's life. Always life. It's life. Interesting. Hmm. Very interesting. Is it like up high in the minaret? Uh, in the before, when there was no speaker and microphone, okay. they had to go all the way up there. That's what I was thinking. So yes. today. <laughs> That's the microphone. Oh, so, <laughs> so he stands here. Yes. yes, the speakers are in the middle. Uh, okay. I guess you don't have to do testing, testing, one, two, three. No. <laughs> you can hear it whether it's working or yes, not. Yes, you can hear it. Oh, okay. And the beauty is those days, the mosques that are built with dome is purely because of acoustic reason. Okay. Because you want the voice to travel because you do not have microphones, speakers and so on. So it's more for acoustic reasons. Thank you very much. That was very interesting. most welcome. Very interesting. I would strongly advise you go to uh, uh, the federal territory mosque. You will love it. You will enjoy. Okay. Is that the same as the national mosque? No, Is national different? different. National yeah. mosque the capacity is fifteen thousand. It is not too far away from here. Yeah. National Mosque is just a kilo, uh, kilo and a half from yeah. here. That's yeah, that's around Yeah, that's around The other side, you go there, you can see the National Mosque. Mm -hmm. But the Federal Territory Mosque is seven and a half kilometers away from right. here. I think I, I know where it is, yeah. It's I, I beautiful. It, yeah. It, the domes are just like the Blue Mosque of Turkey. Oh, wow. It's beautiful. Only yeah, beautiful. Yeah. It has Taj Mahal influence in it. Because all the stones are semi-precious stone, and the the skill, uh, the person who did the embedding of the precious stone into the marble, are the descendants who built Taj Mahal. They came here, remarkable workmanship. You know, they carved the marble, then they put this precious stone, they glue it back inside. Beautiful, super. Thank you.
you again. I do appreciate it. Very thank you for coming. Thank you yeah, for coming. Thank you. Yeah. No, I enjoyed that very much. Learned a lot. If you have any, no mind. I won't mind. Even though the the questions are ridiculous, please just post it. No problem because otherwise you will never know yeah. what's the truth behind this. Mm-hmm. So that's why I always share with people. I mean, I get do get a lot kind of weird questions, but I tell them when I tell them it is not Islamic, then okay, now they get the clear picture. Ah, another uh, visitor, yeah. perhaps. Experience tying up room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Done that before, so. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Did he answer Thank all your you questions? I hope. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. We almost ran out of questions. You know, he he answered them all quite oh, quite well. It's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was a pleasure. It was okay. a real pleasure. Right. Okay, okay. So, thank you. Bye bye. Well, quick um, reaction. Very interesting. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. And as I said, just as I, as I was going in, I was talking about how I was expecting originally there would be a tour. And then I thought, oh, actually, no, it's just going to be open to the public. But we ended up getting a very informative, personal, personal yeah. tour. Uh, couldn't well ask done. for better than that. Very well done. Very well spoken man very passionate in, in what he was talking about. Yeah, very, very, very interesting. I enjoyed that quite a bit. Well, worth doing. Absolutely. I'm not glad we decided to come up here. I can wander this way and then I curl back because I've not been up here before. Yeah, from this point, I guess uh, Jamie and I are going to go for a bit of a wander through old little India, maybe pop in somewhere else for a drink at some point, we'll see. But I think as far as uh, the video goes, I think I'm going to end it there with the uh, the end of the, the tour of the Masjid India. Uh, yeah, Masjid India, it's called. Learned a lot about the building itself, the history of it, and learned a lot about uh, Islam, actually. A lot of things I didn't know. And I think with that, uh, because that was so fascinating, there's no... Uh, no need to add more to the end of the video with our wanderings around here. I think I'm going to end it there. Yeah. So, yeah, if you're in the neighborhood, uh, drop by 10 to 12 on those days and uh, get, take a little tour of the mosque. Very interesting. So, as always, wherever you are, hope you're having a good day. I've certainly, uh, my day has gotten off to a good start here. I'll turn the camera around to have the, the mosque behind me as a, as a nice backdrop. And I will see you in the next video.